So this is a Fire TV stick, which I think pretty much everyone is familiar with. But as a small recap, a Fire TV stick is a product made by Amazon, which you can just plug into your TV in order to easily stream videos from Amazon Prime, Netflix, YouTube and whatnot. Needless to say, they are very popular and I actually own three of them at one point. And wait a minute, did you see what I just did there? I powered the Fire TV stick with a USB port of my TV, which is actually not recommended. The problem is that some TV USB ports can only deliver a maximum current of 500 milliamps. And when the Fire TV stick is, for example, updating, it sometimes requires more than 500 milliamps, which could lead to the deactivation of the USB port power and the possible breaking of the Fire TV stick due to the software update interruption. Now, of course, this is a worst case scenario, but it actually happened to me a couple of months ago. And that is why I was very happy to see that there's a product out there that addresses this issue, which is called Mission USB Power Cable. Long story short, it does work just fine. But after I had a closer look at it, I realized that you can build such a circuit easily by yourself, which should not only function for way longer, but also save you a bit of money. So in this episode of DIY or buy, let's not only find out how the buy option works, but also create a promising DIY alternative in order to find out which option I would prefer. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the PSIM software, which is a very useful power simulation software. Its usage is pretty versatile, but as a practical example, let's imagine you want to create your own boost converter, but you are not sure what inductor value to use. Well, with the PSIM software, you can basically build the circuit with your computer and simulate all the current and voltage waveforms for different inductor values. But of course, that is only a super simple example, since the software can simulate almost everything power related. And because there are tons of example simulations available, as well as tutorials, you should be able to pull off more complicated and thus interesting stuff pretty quickly. So why not check it out by clicking the link in the video description. Now first off, in order to scientifically measure the current consumption of the Fire TV stick, I utilized my OTARC as a power supply. In its software I can set the output voltage to 5 volts and observe how the current draw is changing over time as well as the voltage. And as you can see, the fire stick alone does kind of often exceed the 500 milliamp threshold value while booting up. But after maybe around a minute, this value falls down quite a bit and settles at around 200 milliamps while streaming video content. Only while actively browsing through different apps and videos, the current consumption sometimes exceeds the 500 milliamp cap. So as a remedy, let's hook up the Mission USB power cable device, which needs to pre-charge before plugging in the fire stick. While doing so, the circuit draws a constant current of 200 milliamps, and after 10 minutes of charging and plugging in the fire TV stick, this value rose to a maximum of 500 milliamps but never above at any time. That means that this device really solves the USB port problem. But how exactly does it do that? To find that out, I had a look inside and not only found a lithium ion cell combined with suitable protection circuits, but also a well-made circuit board with two main ICs on it. Of course, I had no luck while googling the labels on the ICs. But after inspecting the components closely with the two inductors being prominent and also thinking about the current behavior we experienced before, I had some idea of what was going on. In a nutshell, we got a USB port input and a Fire TV stick output, between which there are two big circuit ports and a battery as an energy storage. The input circuit limits the input current to 500 milliamps total of which 200 milliamps are used for switching regulator to efficiently charge up the lithium ion battery. The other 300 milliamps are fed through to the output to power the Fire TV stick. 
But of course, since 300mA are not always enough, we got the second circuit part which boosts the battery voltage up to 5 volts and thus supplies the stick with its current peaks. And all of this only works because the stick usually requires less than 500mA, which makes it possible for the battery to charge up more than it gets discharged. So all in all, this design does its intended job just fine. But what kind of bothers me is the usage of a lithium ion cell, which you can only charge up and discharge a couple thousands of times before it becomes unusable. And needless to say, lithium ion cells require a whole lot more protection circuits than, for example, capacitors, which I would love to use instead. Now, of course, not such simple electrolytic capacitors, because they can only hold very little energy and thus cannot really buffer the rather big current peaks. No, I'm talking about such supercapacitors, with a capacity of 25 farads. By soldering two of them in series, I can charge them up to 5 volts and hook them up in parallel to the TV stick, in order to significantly decrease its current peaks under 500 milliamps. I mean, you can even power the stick solely through them for almost 2 minutes, and since you can charge them up and discharge them more often than a lithium ion cell, they should work properly for way longer. The only problem is that the initial charging spike can be huge, and limiting that with a resistor is not really a solution, because then the capacitor will take forever to get to 5 volts. So I need a circuit that not only limits the USB port current to 500 milliamps but also charges the capacitors up with a constant current of 500 milliamps and then at a capacitor voltage of around 4.5 volts adds the Fire TV stick in parallel to the capacitors. What I came up with was this schematic, which initially looks a bit intimidating, but is actually quite easy to understand. To explain and showcase it a bit, I firstly though soldered all of the components to one another in mid-air which resulted in this monstrosity. But don't worry, even though its looks are not that pretty, it does its job just fine. So let's start this circuit journey with this part, which is actually the constant current source slash limiter for firstly the supercapacitors and then later also the TV stick, so that the USB port current never exceeds 500 milliamps. While powering the practical circuits, you can see that it pumps close to 500 milliamps into the supercapacitors, until they are at around 4.5 volts, at which point the fire stick joins the party and draws current as well while never exceeding the 500 milliamps cap. This works because I'm creating a 0.1 volt reference voltage through the help of a TL431 IC at the non-inverting input of an op amp that controls a MOSFET. And since the op amp does everything in its power to get equal voltage values at both of its inputs, it is turning on its output and thus the MOSFET so that the current flows through it, which creates a voltage drop of 0.1 volts across this lower resistor that feeds into the other op amp inputs. Of course, this resistor value is well chosen to set a constant current limit of 500 milliamps. And truth be told, this was the hardest part because next we got a simple differential op amp configuration, which basically just outputs a reduced supercapacitor voltage potential. And last but not least, this supercapacitor voltage gets compared to reference voltage, once again created by another TL431 IC. And if the capacitor voltage is higher than 4.5 volts, the output of the op amp turns on, activates a MOSFET and thus connects the Fire TV stick in parallel to the capacitors. So all in all, a pretty simple circuit, which as you can see works perfectly fine while charging up the capacitors and also while powering the Fire TV stick, without ever exceeding the 500mA current limits. And that basically means I was happy with my circuit and thus continued creating a cleaner version of it by soldering all of the components onto a perf board. If you want to build something similar, then have a look in the video description where you can find more information. But let me tell you that you're responsible if you mess something up and blow up your TV or something similar. 
And with that warning out of the way, my own Fire TV Stick USB power circuit was complete. And after doing a proper test with my TV, it seems to work perfectly fine. But of course, there was still the update test missing. And luckily, my Fire Stick was craving for one. Which also worked out just fine and didn't even get close to depleting the energy reservoir of the supercapacitors. But if you want to be extra safe, then you can always add more supercapacitors to my circuits. In order to not only increase the buffer functionality, but also, sadly, the charge up time. Last but not least, I also did a bit of math to see how much my version would cost. And by simply going with component costs, it seems like half of the commercial one's price. So due to many advantages, and of course some disadvantages, I personally have to say that this time DIY is the winner for me. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed it, then consider supporting me through Patreon. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!